sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is a Monday night. It is nine o'clock and it is time to attend your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Um, I shall be doing very little moving, um, particularly today. Um, <laughs> the back is is on the mend. Um, it's actually something to do with my hip um, that's caused bits to her and stuff. Um, so yes, thank you very, very much for the team for standing in um, last week. Um, I'm loving the team talks, as I'm sure everybody else is. Weird thing is, I've been on a concoction of uh, painkillers, which have, uh, as well as making me see fairies and, and flying things, have actually really sort of changed my, my taste buds. Um, and I've been reaching for stuff that, uh, that I've not sort of, or, or I've tried and liked, but for some reason my usual vapes have just gone out of the window and and most of my usual foods have um i've i've been trying some of the pie boy stuff um the blueberry waffles is a particular good one at the moment and i've just oh, i've got a little dripper now um from dares at safer six um which is one of the little jaw coiled jobbies um cracking little thing mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. <sighs> really is a good little thing and I'm, I'm sampling something in there at the moment which is um, chomping cheesecake which which seems to be nice it's quite biscuity um, and I like my biscuits so I think everything's sort of getting back to getting back to normal um, sort of now sort of ish um, I'm facing a different way if you haven't seen already I can't see any of the chat I can't see what any of you are saying and I can't see the team um, very good reason for that and you will see a little bit later on I've realized until I hit the button and went to go live um, it doesn't quite work how it used to um, so things may be slightly all over the place I don't even know if I'm broadcasting I know I'm recording um, but I'm sure I'll find out in in an hour or when these videos start playing I'll pop in and, and check with the team um, could it be going tits? I don't know. Um, but yes, there is very good reason. I've had a move around in the workshop. I have the new tool um, that's arrived, uh, and, uh, and I'll be showing you that a little bit later on. What I'm going to do is crack in to uh, to Mark's video. He was making the, I've called it, or I've named it, the uh, the monster tin. Um, it's it's shaping up to be a cracking mod. Uh, let me see you back very, very shortly after this. Okay then, so when we left things last week, this was basically the stage we're at. I've got all the holes cut and ready now, uh, displays in place. So now I need to deal with the other components. And we'll start with that. One thing which I didn't mention last week because I hadn't decided on it, but because of the way that display is going to work, I will want the option of just switching the whole thing off. If it's not in use really, so I'm just on the negative side I will be adding a simple on off switch mounted inside the case. Just to be able to knock it off completely when you don't want it basically. And as for the potentiometer, I'm gonna be replacing it with one of these, the 5k one, which is what I'm about to do now. But I'm just gonna mount this in the side. The only reason I'm replacing it is because this makes it a lot easier to adjust than trying to fiddle with a tiny little screw. So, first job is to try and remove this. And the way this is laid out, there's not a lot of room to get a hold of it. But we'll see how we go. I'll start off clean off the tip. Turn it up so you can get come out with the solder. And it'll just pop off when you manage to heat all three at once. Very simple to do. And because I've been adding extra solder, two of the contact points I've shorted out there. which would make it very difficult to work with. The best way to get rid of this solder, if you possibly can, is to put the pump on the back side of what you're working on. 
heat up the front. And just pop it through. And you end up with a clear hole, hopefully. Of course you could just solder onto the surface the new wires. This way you're going to get a better contact if at all possible. And I seem to have missed one. And there we have it. Three nice clean holes ready for wires. And I have the wires here. I found with when you're soldering the things like this, it's better if you attach the wires to this first before putting through the holes. So you put it through the holes first, you're trying to bend wires to touch onto these. And that makes them spring away, so it's very hard to solder them. Oops. Let's try that again without knocking everything over the floor. So, first job, I need to tin up the wires. Just quickly add a bit of salt at each end. Like so. Uh, see, I've got two black wires and a red wire, just so I know which is which. The colour itself is irrelevant, I think. So, the two on one side are going to be the blacks because they're either side, and on the other side will be the sweep, so it's going to be red. Hold them in place till it cools down. And there you have it. Let's salt it up. Now, basically, the wires are going to want to go black, red, black through the holes. Provided I haven't got too much solder on them, they should fit through. Then again, maybe it's the want. So, I'll just have a quick try of snipping off the ends. At the end, this tends to be where you get a slightly thicker bit of solder on the wire. Well, these are definitely not going to go through there, so what I'm going to have to do is hunt out a small drill and try and drill these holes slightly bigger, I think, just to make my life a little bit easier. So I've had a little move around in, in the workshop today um, and the metal lathe complete with the tip that I'm working on is, is now in the total opposite corner of the workshop. I thought we'd give you a little tour around. I've moved the, uh, moved the pillar drill. Um, I've got God knows how many tools and bits and pieces going on over there with 
all of the Children in Need raffle prizes in the background there. Um, still in the midst of tidying up and the reason I've sort of uh, had to sort of do this, I've narrowed down to one monitor for the broadcast stuff. It's Mr. Dawn there. Look. Can't get enough of watching that show. Absolutely incredible show that. Um, a few mods up there and stuff. But we're coming around to the corner where I believe um, the action will happen. We have a, a new lathe. Um, I'm going to show you that in a bit more detail. This one is a wood turning lathe. Um, interesting stuff. I may lose a limb. But, just to show you, I've had to move. I did used to have a big rack there in that corner which housed all of the uh, all of the stuff for the shows uh, you know the audio and all that sort of stuff but I've built in a, a little sort of racky mounty thing I put another support in and now I've got all my mixers and power and PCs and the Macs stuck up there on the top to do all that sort of stuff yes so a little little tour of, of the workshop um, let me come back to this so, too. my new toy has arrived, um, and this is a uh, Axminster Hobby Series um, wood lathe, effectively. It uh, will do stuff for turning wood, effectively. I've got the metal lathe over the other side. I really wanted to have a go with something by hand. The one thing that has shocked me is I ordered a couple of tools. Um, it's the sheer length of the damn things. I did not expect them to be so big. Um, I've got this part of the ear, um, which is as long as my leg, which has a, I'll show you those a little bit later, and the other one, which is even longer. Um, I'm going to start sort of, this is the first time I've, I've been playing, I know that the, the resty thing goes there. And I've got a new bit to uh, a new chuck to on here because it comes as standard with a um, a faceplate type thing. So I've had to purchase a chuck um, to hold blanks, and I've been talking to Graham um, at Siam, um, and and he's given me a lot of help and advice into sort of what best to look at. But everything seems to be moving really, really well, and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all looking good um, first thing that I'm gonna do is take a look at the um, at the chuck that I've got um, because it has many many functions um, and uh, and then I'll show you some of the tools um, that I've sort of purchased to uh, to do the turning okay so basically um, your standard wood lathe doesn't come with uh, with a chuck you do have to purchase one and um, after taking much advice, this seemed to be the best um, in terms of flexibility and this and the other that you can get. Um, when you're buying a wood chuck, you have to check that your um, threading uh, as it goes on the lathe is compatible with um, the, the lathe that you need to bolt that on. Because effectively, this just screws on to, uh, to the back platey thing on the lathe. Um, I've already taken the liberty of, of inserting my first set of jaws on there. Um, this chuck comes with three sets of jaws, um, and I think I'm probably going to get the most purpose out of these. Um, because it's a wood turning lathe, this will grip a piece um, in the middle, or you can expand it out to uh, for bowl turning and stuff like that. It comes with, as I say, three sets of jaws. These ones have, have been sort of polished up. Um, for those interested, this is the Nova G3 chuck, um, which comes is, as a sort of a, a complete set. Um, and as I say, it, it comes with, um, and they're, they're still, these ones are still covered in grease, but uh, three sets of, of bits to pretty much cover you for most things. And a screw thready thing that you can thread on for doing bowls and this out and the other um, a top 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 piece of kit um, really read up on this it is very 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 highly rated um, the lathe itself actually did come with um, what they call a live uh, center so this uh, 
end bit here spins is for gripping um, you know when you're, you're turning blanks and stuff that will spin with a blank um, it also comes with a, uh, a sort of a grippy wood bit which I nearly took my hand off looking at and that is uh, sort of like a sharpie thing that you prod in and grip and all of that sort of stuff haven't got a clue what I'm doing um, I'm going to be taking much advice and consolation <laughs> before I go. I need to start getting some bits installed on the lathe. Um, I've got here the the turny wheel bit that goes on to the other end for drilling and this that and the I've got this which I do not have a clue what it does and I need to uh, install my chuck. I will pop back in two and we'll take a look at that in progress. Um, I do apologise if today is all about setting up a new tool um, but I think it's, it's, it's going to be good. We're going to get some good stuff out of there. And I may even have a little turn at the end of it just to see how it goes. Back in two. And we're back in the room. Um, yes, it's not... I mean, this, this week um, I did have a little bit of a problem moving. Um, hence filming the workshop thingy. Um, I must thank a lot of... Uh, a lot of friendly people who come and help me move while I dictated where stuff needed to go because I couldn't bend down. It's very, very kind of you. Um, let me slip into our first little air break and uh, we'll come back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your ECPs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. Um, and I now do have you guys, if you're watching live, uh, I now have the facility of seeing you in in the, the chat. The iPad has, has finally decided to kick in. Um, so uh, I can see exactly what you're all saying. Um, just picked up on one thing there. Somebody asked, um, what is that chuck? It is a, it's by Record Power. It's a Nova G3. Um, and it's it's the kit that comes with the three thingies. It's annual, not cheap. Um, it's about 118 quid for the chuck. Um, I'll come on to that a little bit later on. Um, going through it, it's it, the, the the lathe and, and all the bits and pieces are birthday presents um, that I've called in very very early. Um, it is my birthday on the 20th of September. Just in case anybody would you know like to send me um, lathe bits, I don't mind. Um, on the 19th of September, myself and Super Seven are doing something like this. So yes, World Vaping Day, 19th of September. Um, myself and Super 7, the Hope Pub in 
it's just down the road in Sutton. The address is, is on the video. Have a look. If you want to know, if you want to turn up, PM myself and, and Super on any of the forums and, and we'll guide you in. Um, I believe there's a live band on the night. Um, we've got use, I think, the marquees and all of that sort of stuff. There is another event running um, the same day. So it's, it's very good two events sort of, uh, sort of mixing and mingling. I think one of them is something to do with pirates. So if you are vaping and you want to come dressed as a pirate, you would fit in an absolute treat. Um, let me crack on with uh, our next little bit um, where I start to sort of, uh, I think, turn the lathe on. Now, I do actually put tools to wood um, a little bit later. So uh, it wasn't all standing around filming the lathe um, pop back into. Right. So as I said earlier, the, the lathe as it comes, as standard, comes with a faceplate. Now, this faceplate effectively is what you can use for bolting a piece onto um, to work with. Um, I didn't get a very speed lathe. Um, I saved my money on the lathe and uh, and spent my money on my tooling um, purely because it seemed the best way forward. I, I, cheaper lathe and, and tooling that is, is very, very good um, in terms of the chuck, this, that, and the other, that is then cross compatible should the lathe go. These lathes do have a very good reputation um, and yeah, I have no reason to believe it's not going to do what I want it to do. Um, I didn't want to get the, uh, uh, the variable speed one purely because all of this in, is, is encased at the back and it is sometimes easier to turn a piece by hand just to check you're all lined up and this that, and the other. You don't have that facility on the other one. All of this is encased. To remove the faceplate, quite simple. You should be able to just twist that off. And this is, I think it's a one inch and something eighthy jobby fitment, something like that. But I match that with my chuck, and my chuck should very simply now screw on the back in there. So I've got my four jaw chuck in place. And if I get my doodah what's it, it's a really nice smooth action on that chuck. It seriously is. I can see the difference in this chuck to the one that comes standard on the on the metal lathe. It's nowhere near um, to the quality of this one. It is an absolute serious piece of kit. And when you think this is the bit that's going to be gripping the stuff you're working on, definitely well worth the investment. Let's have a look at the other end. Right, so I'm at the other end of the chuck now. Uh, chuck, lathe, whatever it's called. And, um, and basically, uh, I need to install my, uh, my live centre. Now, the reason I went for this particular chuck um, and, and it was advised is because the rear fitting on these is an MT2 fitting. Um, my metal lathe is an MT2 fitting, which means that my, um, if you like, my drill bit chuck and all of that should be cross compatible. Bang in the live center, and I've attached me doodle, what's it? So I should be able to spin in and out now. I haven't locked that down, that's why it's flapping around. But once it's locked down, absolutely solid. And you can then lock this off with this nut here, or the screw there, so that becomes an absolute solid bit of kit to work on. Obviously the doodah, what's it, the rest goes in and out, in and all around, and all that sort of stuff. So we should be able to. Um, let me just grab a, a blank. Ooh, hello. Um, go with this. Chuck the blank in. I should be able to clamp them up. Do you know I haven't powered this up yet. It's, um, I don't even know if it's going to work. So clamp your blank up. I should be able to bring in me live centre. Tighten that up. I'm going to slap that off and just bring that in a tad so it's nice and tight. And tighten that up and effectively I should have then you can see I don't even see the markings on that but this is now revolving with this tell you what I'm gonna tempt fate and just power the thing up and our blanks running I'll tell you what that is as quiet as anything that seriously is the first time I've powered that up. I can see I'm getting 
machine oil from the chuck splattering off the back of there. So uh, I've got a bit more cleaning up and bits and pieces to do. But that is a seriously quiet lathe. I am impressed with that. I'm going to show you uh, some of the tools that I've got. Um, I've got a, a cut-off tool or a paring tool. It's a big old boy. And I think for me the most impressive stuff has, has been the, the actual tooling. Um, I've got a cheap tool um, which was about 20 odd quid and this one here um, is a massive wooden handle um, and it's got a revolving tip so you can do lots of different things with a revolving tip. Um, this is just a standard, if you like, steel tip, it will require sharpening, this, that and the other. The other bad boy that I've got, um, and bearing in mind, I, I, you know, a lot of people have, have very generously given me some cash for my birthday, and uh, and this is where all this comes from. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, it's made by Robert Sorby, and it is um, an absolute beastie. Uh, these are um, carbide tips, um, and this should be able to cope with anything you chuck at it. Um, it's got an indexable head so you can do the wood smoothing, this that, and the other. So looking at their, their website you can pretty much get, if you like, a near perfect finish requiring very little sanding. Um, so it is an absolute beastie though, but I can understand it because you've got to get some control on that when you're in, I wouldn't work at that angle, but when you're in there. Um, exciting stuff. I'm absolutely and completely and utterly excited to have this in my head. This is so big. It's the biggest tool I've got. When you look at the little bits that are on the metal lathe, um, compared to this big beastie boy, but, uh, you know, I'm going to be turning some wooden stuff and whatever. Um, hopefully, 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 pop back into. So I've popped in, uh, I think it's a one mil drill bit, could be even smaller than that, I'm not entirely certain. But holding against the hole it's slightly bigger. So. Fingers crossed, when I've done that I haven't destroyed the contacts. I don't appear to have, so... With any luck at all. I should just need to solder these in place. Fingers crossed. 
that is three wires connected now. But because of the unexpected modification I've had to do to that, I'm going to need to test it out, I think. So give me one second, I'll get some power for it. And so just to test that everything's working okay, I've quickly just tacked the two wires from the batteries onto the board. They're just tacked onto the surface so I can remove them easily once we're done. I'm going to have to rewire it to a different configuration at the end. So you've got the positive and negative coming in. There's our control and here is the meter. So if I can pop the contacts under there, you see I'm getting a reading of 8.28 at the moment. That's with it fully open. And if I start to move the control, you'll see it's slowly starting to drop. There you go. So it's working. I didn't break it. So I'll just I'm not being an idiot, I'll take the batteries out first. You really don't want to be soldering to a live circuit wherever possible. So. Just quickly turn off the tip, touch to this, and the wire pulls away. away. And as I've just covered over this hole, what I need to try and do is get the solder back out. Like so. Often takes a few attempts if you can't get it in the right place. But we shall carry on. And the next thing I want to have a look at is how these little micro switches work. So I've set it to continuity so that when there's a short, you get a beep. I don't know why I've had nearly enough beeps in these shows recently. So Basically these work, the two on one side, and hold them on, nothing happens when it's open, this is incredibly hard to do. So nothing happens when it's open, and when you close it, you get a beep. And the pins opposite each other are connected directly. So that whether you're pressing the button or not, see if I can get this to work. said I wouldn't but I did uh, I had a little play um, and I've got some oak um, that I've just been playing with taking round and I've made it round I rapidly realized how much mess a wood lathe can make um, I need to get a dust extractor um, I was looking at one but I most definitely think that is 
a must. I've got a K-Fun. Funky, funky, funky thing. Love it. But anyway, let's make a little bit more dust. Now, I did faithfully promise that I wouldn't actually turn anything um, until I'd spoken um, and got instruction. Um, I couldn't wait. It was there. I had to have a go. I'm not going to turn or attempt to turn any acrylic yet because... I think wood's going to be a bit more forgiving than, than acrylic, um, to be honest with you. And even the wood, it's it's very, very difficult. I didn't realise just how difficult it is um, for somebody who's never done it before, actually turning wood. Um, if this show, I've, I've got a plan for this little bit of oak. If, if I can do it, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be incredibly hard and... I've already noticed to to get any sort of finish takes a hell of a lot of skill that I do not yet have. Um, let's give it a little go and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, the way that this uh, sort of head is set up, um, it's really because I'm going cross grain. It's really taking chunks out. I need to do a lot more. Uh, research. I've just give that a little uh, sand, um, but let me power this back up. That's going to be chopped to buggery, as you can see. Um, I've been watching some of them. <laughs> Looks like I'm making a deal there. I'm, I'm not. Um, it's chopped to buggery. Um, and I know there are ways of adjusting the head to get a, uh, you know, a, a better finish on it. Um, but I'm going to try and work on this. I'm going to narrow it down and, and do bits and pieces with it. Um, at the moment, I just have a chunk of wood I am lathing the hell out of. Um, practice chunk of wood. Um, it's an old, or I got this for a quid from B&Q. It was a stair runner. Um, I'm impressed with the tool. Um, I didn't realise how much mess um, turning wood would make. Um, am I over the moon? Absolutely. Um, I'm stood here with a. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm stood here with, but uh, let me try the other tool. Good. 
good a cut as as the uh, as the carbide. Um, I'm obviously still a little bit twitchy. I've I've never done this before, um, and uh, lots and lots and lots more practice watching uh, the way that Graham um, used exactly, and it was this tip that that or, or this exact tool that he used to make his drip tips. Um, bloody hell, uh, you know it, it looks so easy, um, and and even watching Dave uh, Dave Dorn do his bit. Um, you know, crikey, it's it's going to be a whole new learning experience for me. Um, <laughs> I need a hoover. Uh, I'll put back into. And there we go. We're back in the room once again. I would like to just point out. Obviously, that was the first time I I powered up that lathe um, because I was working with wood. The one thing I didn't say there is I did have my. Uh, dust mask on and I've rigged up a hoover now um, to take a lot of the dust out of the room. The other thing to point out is you shouldn't have your rest that far away from, from the work. Um, I know now, um, I didn't know then, um, you need to have your rest very very close so you get better control of, of the tool. Um, they can bite, I don't want to get bitten, I don't want anybody else to get bitten, um, so it's always good to have your rest up as close as you can. Um, that was me jumping in like a um, like a loony with a new toy, as as one does. Um, and you know, luckily I wasn't bitten, but I could have done, or could have been. Um, so yeah, rest needs to be closer to the work, gives you better control over the tooling. Um, let's go into our second little ad break, and uh, we'll pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. I must say, that little dripper, the dual coil thingy, is absolutely stonking. It was about 12 quid or something, absolutely kicking out plumes. And um, Pie Boy's chomping cheesecake is very, very nice. Um, very, very close, very, very close to a good old cheesecake. As I was saying before, um, obviously, rest up against the wood. Um, let me crack in and crack on. Um, time is, is running out rapidly. Back with uh, Mark's tin. You press the button and it keeps on beeping. So what that will mean for this project is, oh, forgive me, I've got the three wires, a common and two controls. So what I'll be doing is taking the two switches and I'll put the common into this one. Oh sorry, I'll put the common into this one. Now from here to here I'll run a wire so that you've got a negative on both sides. And then on each end one I'll put one of the green wires. That's what we're going to do now. Now because I'm not going to be using this, I can cut these wires a lot shorter. 
as all they need to go to is here. So all I'm going to do, rather than desoldering all this, I'm just going to cut them. Like so. I'll keep that handy because that could always be used in a different mod at some point. So that'll go off to one side. And I just need to strip off these wires. negative wire to run between the two. I'll just snip off a short length and if I didn't fire it across the room. It would work a lot better wouldn't it? So holding the other way, snip off a length. Starting with the negative, which is the one I need to get right. Like so. And the positive can go to either one of the other terminals on this. And the same on this one. Just done. So all that can be done now is fixing them through the holes and we're almost ready to go. At this point I need to look at the switches. So what we're going to have is a positive and a negative from the batteries. I'm going to go, on to, go to a positive and negative from this display to power it and to the positive and negative inputs on here. So the way I'm going to want to do it is for the positive this will go straight to the switch like that and from the switch, other side of the switch will go to the board and the positive from the display will go to the battery side of the switch so that the display would stay on whether you're pressing the button or not. And on the other side, this one, this will go to one side of the switch, which will be the common one, which is the center ghost. 
and on the other side we're going to have the wire for the display so that when you have the switch on the display lights up and a wire coming from the same point to the negative on here and that will be a similar matter the positive and negative output will go to the atomizer connector and the only wire we'll have left over is this green wire which is the sensor wire for the display to tell you the voltage and that I intend to just solder straight into the positive from the board so there'll be two wires coming from the positive one straight the atomizer and one of this and we'll be done all sounds very simple uh, I guess you'll have to come next week and see whether it is bye for now I'd have one more play with a different tool. I've got the uh, the square bit on now. Hence, you can see this sort of um, squared in, so it allows you to sort of <laughs> sort of thing, sort of square things. Maybe this is the one I should have been using to do this. I didn't realise how difficult this was going to be. I don't know I'm grabbing on there, but I'm grabbing on something on the... It might just be that it's uneven. I seem to have a notch out of my tool rest. For some reason. But I found that you can Sam. Like I say, I'm playing. Um, I'm playing with the tooling. I'm trying to I'm trying to get this down to a a size that I've got an idea with something to do with, with that section. Um, I don't know, I'm getting there, I think. Uh, I don't know. But um, I think this is going to take, uh, this is going to be one of those huge, as I said, huge, huge, huge um, learning curves. Um, there's one tool I haven't tried yet, which is uh, the parting tool, um, which is probably not a good idea at this moment in time. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I think I need to definitely have a lot more play, a lot more practice, um, a lot more learning most definitely to do. Um, this is one of those tools that, that doesn't scare me, but I think if I don't learn the, um, the principles behind it first, it's going to bite me. Um, and that is most definitely not a good idea. With that said, I'm going to uh, head back to the studio with limbs intact. Um, next week, I'm going to be finishing or carrying on with the pipe. It's had a lot more, a lot more sanding um, this week. Um, this is the reason I wanted to film the setup of the lathe. Uh, you really didn't want to see me rub wood because I forgot it. But effectively, all I'm doing with this thing is sanding out yeah, hours and hours and hours of sanding. Um, not very good viewing. Hopefully, the uh, the new lathe will, um, will give us something else to play with. 
I'll see you back in the studio. And there we go, back in the room once again. Um, I did, I was playing with that bit of wood. I know I was, I was watching some of the comments. Um, I was playing with that bit of wood, um, show you something very, very, very quickly um, because it still needs work. Um, nee, 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 nee. This is this is sort of where we were going with that chunk of wood. Um, lots more work to do in that, yeah. 18650 um, wood mod. Um, but I will come on to that at another time. Um, I was actually playing, the, the, I had another little play, um, and I've got a mate who's a, he's a fisherman, um, and he goes salmon fishing, and they use a thing which is a, uh, effectively called a priest. Um, so I've made a, a mini club um, that you beat fish with half to death um, for him. Now, you could use that for other things, um, but it is meant for knocking fish out. Um, also been playing with narrowing down, you know, working a lot smaller um, on the lathe, because one of the other reasons, obviously, for that is is to make the uh, the drip tips. Um, and after getting my, my rest right and and learning to getting close, um, I have actually sort of managed to start getting down to some sort of really small um, tip shapes. So it's a lot of work. Um, I've been playing with it. Um, and it seems to be getting there. I'm getting a lot more comfortable. I've adjusted the rest now. So, um, you know, lots of stuff, it's especially with um, with stuff like this, which is where I wanted to go. Um, stainless, stainless steel insert and 510 and switchy on the front. Got to play with the switch quite a lot on that. Um, but this is the sort of stuff where I want to go. Um, and, and hopefully we can encompass some of that into the show. Uh, what do we have coming up for you for the rest of the week? Obviously tomorrow we've got Vapor Scene um, with Marco uh, and then followed by DE Talk on Wednesday. Mr. Dorm is back. Um, I must say again, stunning show last week with VT Talk. On Thursday we've got the Haze Hour. Um, on Friday, um, join Tim in RY4, uh, for, you know, with RY4 Radio and I'll play this for him. And then on Sunday we'll be back with uh, with uh, Dave Kitson, and if he's not around, um, no doubt the team talk will kick in. Um, been watching some of those. Uh, obviously been on one, absolutely stunning. I will pick up on one comment. Um, the baby's dummy. This is the other end. Don't worry about it. There's still work to do on that as well. I'm practicing. Um, hopefully, between me and Mark coming up at some point. Um, we've got the metal lathe, the wood lathe, Mark's got his big rowdy thing and lots of other stuff. I'm sure at one point we are going to come up with a mod um, between us that uses all of our various bits and pieces. Um, it is time for me to call it a night. Um, it's been good to be back, um, even if it is under the influence of, uh, of Mr. Coding. Um, but hopefully in the coming weeks I will ease up ever so slightly. Don't forget the, uh, the, the meet on the 19th, um, the Hope Pub in Carl Shorten. If you can get down there, it will be well worth it. Uh, with all that said, it has been emotional. Um, catch you next week. Cheers, guys. Good night. Tip with Gary Dibley.